What's going on? Boys, thanks to our patrons and Fiverr customers, arm yourselves, life stuff. Lots of topics today, we are not going to hit all of them, but we'll try to hit the big stuff. The absolute state of young men is a topic that is always on my mind. They are almost always in rough spots, and I dislike most of them because the option of all the options they could choose is almost always to attach themselves to an internet personality to give that personality money and then to adopt whatever tumorous beliefs and behaviors this online personality is pushing. It's hard to drum up sympathy for people like that. You expect people to care about you or to support you or at least to view you as nice and powerless victims when all you do is shoot yourself in the foot repeatedly and then get mad at everyone but yourself and the cock you worship. And I was under the impression I would age away from that demographic. But unfortunately, between an aging population in the United States and a presence online, I am still a young dude and I am obligated to care about, or at least to analyze, these dumb motherfuckers because I get grouped in with them. And online, it's like a moth to a flame. I attract the exact sorts of people I hate. But, I saw a few videos about VTubers who are now championing the terrible states of young men, and it pushed me into thinking about some things. Right, because now you are not just getting thirst trapped by VTubers or cute trapped by VTubers, you are getting mommy trapped by VTubers. Because maybe enough young men have been daddy trapped by YouTubers and other influencers, there's a gap in the market they can fill to earn more money and improve their image. Firstly, been saying it for years, not the primary point of this video, these people don't care about you. But what I realized is they shouldn't care about you. Not because you're stupid, which you are, but instead two reasons. One, you don't need coddling, especially false coddling, and two, they should be a lot more concerned about themselves. And if there's a problem they actually want to solve, it isn't coddling young disaffected men, it should be trying to deal with the problems that are disaffecting young men. Because right now, they're just disaffecting young men. But I'm beginning to think what's happening is not some kind of war on young men or war on some political movement. We are feeling the bands of the hurricane of social collapse. And I don't mean apocalypse overnight. You remember how in Mad Max, the original, Society was still kind of functional. That's what I'm talking about. Stretched out over however many decades this is going to take. Mostly young men are getting affected right now because young men are, always have been, and always will be the easiest to throw to the wolves. We do it in wars, we do it in emergencies, we do it on lower levels all the time. That's what we're seeing right now. A throwing to the wolves but we aren't processing it as that, because like frogs in skillets, it's heating up slowly. And we throw young men to the wolves, because in theory, young men are the most equipped to handle these sorts of difficult situations. And that is the case. That is, no matter how bad it feels, the honest-to-God truth. And if you aren't, a young man, that should unnerve you. We have discussed before the eerie powers young men can tap into when they are pushed to or they're forced to. It's a little eerie that a young dude who just shows up to the gym and screws around can become stronger in two or three months of undisciplined training than most people on the planet. If you're a young dude, the noob gains are yours for the taking, and you should take them. 
I cannot understate how freakish just noob games are against other young men who have not gotten their noob games. Not to mention every single other demographic. Little anecdote. Dude who worked out for a couple years, mainly for aesthetics, stout, but not even bodybuilder strong. Versus fit some kind of grappler black belt woman. Years of exercise and martial arts training versus a dude who just threw weights around sometimes. Manhandled her. In a friendly way. Fun. But if you are not a fit young man, that anecdote should unnerve you. We're just getting the bands of this hurricane at the moment. And society's answer so far, which has been a non-answer, is to, once again, throw young men to the wolves. Let them deal with it. The rest of us will pretend like this isn't happening or it doesn't matter. And when you do that, it's like you're putting them socially in a different dimension. They have no institutions to seek guidance or support from. They have no people they can turn to. In fact, they are almost always blamed squarely for the problem they are suffering from. What's the problem? Young men are the problem, not the factors that are making young men act weird. And they are acting weird. They're in this pocket dimension with nobody and nothing other than blame and pain coming in from the outside. So what do young men do when you put them in these disfavorable at best circumstances? They do exactly what chimpanzees and hyenas do. They form echo chamber gangs because they have been barred from other chambers. They can't not be in an echo chamber. Their other alternative is to be totally alone. And for a dude who's 19 or 20, that's scary. That's painful. That's Their skin hasn't thickened enough yet. And I don't mean that as a dig. I mean that as that's a really tough situation to be in. So they group up based on shared feelings, feelings which are almost always pain and disaffection, and interests. Interests, coincidentally, I don't know how this happens, but interests that help them survive, at least in their minds, these hard situations, i.e. weights, firearms, substances, weird political or ethical beliefs, and so on. And who is leading these gangs of young men who are gearing up and ganging up to try to deal with these bad circumstances? It is other fucked up dudes who are a little bit less young. Sometimes a lot less young, but they know how to cater to this audience. And one of the reasons I can't drum up a lot of sympathy is somehow, thank God for me, I figured out or I noticed the grift and stopped getting grifted. You can develop the strength and the resilience and maybe forfeit some parts of yourself you would rather not part with and learn to choose for yourself and to think for yourself. You can do that. But you don't see that often because boy, is it so much easier, and does it feel so much better, at least until you need to start doing mental gymnastics, to put your faith in big brother or daddy. But what a young man should and shouldn't do isn't the point of this video. Here we are observing, and these many big brothers and daddies are here to stay. And I guess mommies too now but I have some theories about that. Regardless, you are breeding generations of young men who deify strength, violence, strange, sometimes unhinged, often pointed beliefs, and toe-jam sucking, licking submission to older men who seem like they know what they're talking about. Or funny. 
They're called military-aged males. They are conditioned and somewhat evolved to this sort of thing. You're breeding soldiers and pushing them to follow retards. That would be bad for one generation. It looks like this is just the status quo now. Nothing's going to be done about this. So it's not just 10 years of men growing into this condition. Soon enough, it's going to be 20, and then 30. And as the hurricane blows in, that pressure for young men to develop that sort of mindset and to an extent capability is only going to get worse because the situation is only going to get worse. Because what do you think society is going to do <laughs> when they realize, or it realizes, these sorts of young men are not just a niche, this is just what young men are now. Because they have no other option. Because the blame keeps coming their way. More blame is going to go their way and it's going to get even worse. And I'm not suggesting all young men are going to be united under violence and under a specific set of political or social beliefs. I am suggesting, if things keep going the way they're going, all young men are going to be predisposed toward violent, or the deification of violence of strength, and collaring to a variety of political and social beliefs, all of which are going to be strange and extreme and pointed. And the reason we're talking about this is those young men are not the ones who are going to be suffering. They are built for these conditions. When things get bad, you get strong and you follow whatever strong man you think is going to get you out of this. When the hurricane hits everybody, young men are going to be the least affected because they're the most comfortable with it and capable of handling it, emotionally and, more concerningly, physically. I'm not familiar with instances of Gramp Gramp playing the knockout game. Playing it anyway, not uh, being a recipient of it. <laughs> He's been the recipient of it more, more than enough. I'm not familiar with woman-centric gangs who rape and pillage. It's like society is building the muscle that is going to really fuck it up when things get bad. And young dudes might be thinking, well, I would never be a bad guy. I would be a force of justice because that's what my favorite YouTuber tells me to be. Okay, what happens when your favorite YouTuber becomes somebody else? Because you can't stick to anything. Because you do whatever other young men are doing. What happens when other young men, and therefore you, get obsessed with someone who preaches strange beliefs that are no more strange than the ones you believe right now, but a little more violent? Or if you want to take this time-wise, what happens when that person is your baby brother's favorite YouTuber? And I want to stress, this isn't theoretical. This isn't even drawing parallels between animals or people in disaster situations and modern society. We have a modern contemporary example that peaked quite a while ago, almost 10 years ago. Proud Boys, Gavin McInnes. And if you want, it's funny, if you want to be more serious about it, be more real about it, you can include Antifa in there. It's popular pressure that makes us view these sorts of things as inherently right-wing. Now, they often are, because that's good for polarizing, that's good for drawing people in, that's good for squeezing people of their money, because you have an enemy to point your angry young men at. It is the angry young men over there, on the other side. It's the exact same sort of person, or sort of young dudes, fighting each other. Fringe political groups catering to young men who feel powerless have developed power and now want to aim it at somebody they can blame, becoming increasingly less fringe, becoming incre or decreasingly unified 
and their targets becoming a lot wider. Because what does a predator do? A predator that has been raised to predate, what does it do when it smells blood? What does a bully or a criminal do when it detects an easy mark? It does what it has been conditioned to do. And as the world situation gets worse, as more people, more demographics get hit, there are going to be a lot of easy marks. So young men are in the shit at the moment, but I wouldn't worry about them. They're going to be fine if they don't shoot themselves. If you want to solve a problem, try to solve the society problem. If you want to worry about someone, worry about yourself. You're breeding predators conditioned to listen to stupid shit with the strength and the means to act on that stupid shit. All it's going to take is the wrong chingus at the wrong... <laughs> sounds like a slur. All it's going to take is the wrong charming chingus at the wrong moment to go antichrist and make the world bad for everybody. Really bad. Now with that leg of the video over, I want to talk about some other things. Namely that I think these bands of the hurricane are right now beginning to hit other demographics. Now I think the people we're about to discuss have always existed, but I don't know what to make of the fact they are also beginning to operate with the mindset young dudes do. I am of course discussing disaffected young women and disaffected members of the queer community. They are, they're starting to get a little fashy. Pastel, brake core hoes are buying guns. <laughs> and I do want to talk about fashy, but we'll do that a little later. So now, where there would have been just ranks of these disaffected, strength-focused young dudes, you're getting women and trans people joining them. And not just in token ways and grifty ways you would have seen ten years ago. Like the e-girls with guns thirst trap thing or the deliciously trans for Trump tokens. You are getting genuine fuck everyone, fuck everything, let's hurt people, women and trans people, in these traditionally young dude exclusive ranks. And exclusive not from pushing away, but from a lack of necessity, maybe. Something hit me the other day. Loser women and loser dudes are the same person, and they always have been. Let's think about a song. The narrator is in unrequited love with someone popular. This popular person has all the traits the narrator wants from a partner. But this popular person is really attracted to this other popular person who's a complete asshole. You know, what does this piece of shit think they're doing taking care of themselves, exercising, eating well, dressing well, trying to get ahead and make something of themselves? How dare the narrator's unrequited love be attracted to that person? No, the narrator, or this popular person, needs to be attracted to the narrator. The narrator whose traits are I don't do shit, I don't know shit, I don't take care of myself, I don't dress well, I am utterly mediocre. And what is the narrator's solution to this problem? Is it to try to be like the their unrequited love's popular love interest? Try to better themselves? No, it is always, you unrequited love should love me for being a fucking loser. Now, whom do you think this framework of a song is designed to appeal to? Well, if you said incels or normal women with absolutely nothing wrong with them, you would be right. So many songs follow this pattern, except for the last 10 years, the former was reviled for this dumb shit mindset, 
and the latter was praised for this dumb shit mindset. And it is a dumb shit mindset. If sexual difficulties are a problem, be worth loving. But that's not the point. I think what we're seeing is, as this hurricane blows in, shitty young women are getting pushed into the same camp as shitty young men based on their age. Because if you can't discriminate now based on sex and age, now it's just age. Or we're getting to the point it's closing in on just age. Now it is dumb shit young men and dumb shit young women and dumb shit queer people. Because something's going on there too, but I haven't figured that out yet. My beloved 2% user specified viewership is toting rifles and wearing boots now too. And I have a mixture of feelings about this. On one hand, it stinks that the hurricane is hitting bad enough that other people are starting to get affected seriously. On another hand, I am glad it's hitting. If it's going to hit, I'd like it to be while I'm still young and able enough to do some kind of damage if and when necessary. And even if it doesn't happen for however many decades, guns are a great equalizer, but boy doesn't it feel good, doesn't it feel better to be a young strong male carrying a gun. And then on the third hand, maybe the more distressing hand, what does it mean that women and the queer community are getting thrown to the wolves in a typically male sort of way? Is it a sign that we aren't even pretending to give a shit about good old-fashioned values anymore? Have we embraced literally equal rights, equal fights. Except, instead of it being some kind of battle of the sexes sort of deal, it's more like the segments of society conditioned to deal with fucked upness versus the sections of society that aren't. I don't know. I'm not turning my nose up to these people. As a currently obligate young dude in the young dudosphere, I welcome all to the calling pain doesn't discriminate, but of all the ways the hurricane could have progressed, seeing women and queer people thrown to the wolves also in this way was not, not in the cards. But that's magic and divination and that's for another video, because we have made some progress on other magical stuff. And if the hurricane gets worse, exponentially, we might need that magic. And we have it, I think. Actually, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about. Fashiness. I just finished reading the Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition core rulebook. And while you get a vibe from most of the book, they went in on it at the very end. Fuck fascists. But what do they mean, and I think what does society at large mean when they say fascist? Because what they're describing, or the people they're telling to go fuck themselves, are not fascists. Or at least, not necessarily. For the last ten years, it's so weird how so much, maybe it hasn't changed, evolved. There has been this push toward what people say is collectivism, but is actually liberal hyper-individualism, posing as collectivism, by coddling. The people they're telling to go fuck themselves are people who are collectivist and don't like coddling. And those two traits a fascist do not make. I wouldn't consider us, or our beliefs, and this entire everything we've been talking about movement, I wouldn't call it fascist. Or no. If you're talking about well, everything we've been talking about at large, that's like proto-fashy, but not really even. But if you're talking about what we believe, that 
I wouldn't define what we are as fascist, but we are collectivist and we don't like coddling. I haven't worked this one out entirely, but it's another thing I've been thinking about. There, and not just them, lots of people, I think the American culture, false collectivism, hollow collectivism, serving hyper-individuality, in individuality in its shittiest form, in the most lying and self-serving ways, versus individuality and collectivism that serve each other. And people shit on this movie and book constantly, but what, how would you define Project Mayhem, Fight Club, Tyler Durden, their thing? Because they seem really fashy. They are young, disaffected dudes, but they are anti-authority, both in their own organizational structure and against society at large. So what is fascism that kills fascism? I don't know, but I am quietly thinking about and working on a play-by-post Tremere Vampire Chronicle. I learned that play-by-post is a thing. I learned that we can do it communally without needing dedicated a dedicated crew or party or coterie. Thank you to my vagrants working on the next update soon. And people say you can't do something like this with more than six people. But I have some ideas. The core concept being using this role-playing game as an excuse to engage in some diegesis, I hope I'm using that word correctly, to develop real-world skills. Like, well, I was about to say, like in those videos, like in real life, but discussed in some videos that were popular not that long ago, those career amusement parks for kids. You put them in there, you give them jobs, you let them earn money, get experience with the real world, and incentivize them to do it with fun. What is the best way to learn how to start a business? Do it in a vampire role-playing game, except you go through every single real-life step. How do you feel like an occult, tremere vampire scholar participating in research in a chantry? You do actual research, formatted properly, properly following proper protocols, and you submit it to your chantry's database for other tremere scholars to study. The game you're playing incentivizes you to learn and share real-world shit. In other words, while other disaffected young men, and young women and queer people now, too, are playing soldier and preparing for a total collapse, we can be playing cult and developing yuppie business skills for a partial collapse. A partial collapse we're already in. And boy, I would love in a game to trade tutoring in academic English for tutoring in conversational Spanish. Or I would love to receive quotes peer-reviewed cliff notes on books in exchange for leads on grants or how to write them. Now this is a further off goal and I'm not committing to anything. Maybe the world will end before we reach that point. But it's something I will be thinking about because I think I'd like to do it and I think it can be done. Because it's hard to develop the motivation to improve yourself or to read something or to study something to build your own life up when your life, according to your societal situation, is worthless and is only going to get worse. But if you put that learning, that, that sort of learning in a game, that learning becomes a lot more satisfying because you do see improvement. Your character improves as you, the person, learn things and develop organizational skills. 
because frankly I think as great as wild man soldier boy shooty survival shit is important I think soul crushing logistics will serve you better in most situations but that's enough rambling we'll cut it here we have one in this video one tight excellent leg we have one thoughtful but less tight leg and then we have one rambly leg like if you enjoyed subscribe if you haven't